Right now, we move to the political battlegrounds. Redistricting efforts are underway right now. And it's hard to see them as anything but an effort to silence the new American majority. The Brennan Center is keeping track of the new lines being drawn across the country, analyzing new maps, saying, quote, in redrawing boundaries, Republican map drawers, especially in the South, haven't just declined to create any new electoral opportunities for these fast-growing communities. In many instances, they have dismantled existing districts where communities of color won power or were on the verge of doing so. This brazen attack is unprecedented in scale. And that's despite the majority of population growth coming from communities of color. So what does this all mean? Well, it shows that black and brown folks are making up a larger percentage of our population while simultaneously losing power. Hmm. As Republicans are working to silence our voice and our vote. And while Democrats are drawing new lines of their own, they're just simply outnumbered. Republicans are carving out 187 congressional districts. Democrats control just 75. So how do we keep the minority from silencing the new American majority? The Brennan Center says it comes down to three factors. Unwinding gerrymandered maps through reformed processes, court-drawn maps, and litigation. Joining me now to explain it all is Michael Lee, Senior Counsel for the Brennan Center's Democracy Program. Michael, welcome back to Amplified. I want to actually start with this breaking news. I, I wonder if you were covering that out of uh, the Supreme Court in Alabama. You want to give us a quick update there? Yeah, so the a lower court in Alabama ordered Alabama's congressional map redrawn to create a second black majority district. Alabama right now, out of the seven districts, only has one district that is majority black and black Alabamans make up about 27% of the population. They control one out of seven districts. The court said, you really need to draw two. It gave Alabama a couple of weeks to do so. Alabama appealed to the US Supreme Court, try to get that stopped. And today, this afternoon, the Supreme Court agreed to stop the redrawing the map and to take the case um, that potentially has a lot of impacts, not only for Alabama, but for the ability to use the Voting Rights Act and um, other states around the country. And it is potentially, it's a very worrying sign that the, the court is about to do further damage to what's left of the Voting Rights Act. Mm -hmm. And what's so outrageous about this to me, Michael, is that you've got the state of Alabama, which is more than 25% black, and yet there's only one congressional district where the lines are drawn so that black people actually have representation from their own community. Clearly something is, is not right there. But the intention of the Republicans was to stack the Supreme Court so that they're able to, to do these kind of maneuvers. <clears throat> I want to back up for a second, though. Can you um, give us a little bit of background here for those who aren't familiar with gerrymandering and redistricting? We know redistricting happens every 10 years after the census. Can you explain how the right uses the whole process as a tool to undermine political uh, power of communities of color? Yeah, I mean, so that's a great question. Um, you know, every 10 years we redraw maps and the purpose is to make sure that the districts are equally populated and that you're complying with things like the Voting Rights Act. But what happens instead is people put their <laughs> thumb on the scale. And the easiest way that you can put your thumb on the scale is to pack together or divide up communities of color in order to shore up white districts. In the South, that means white Republican districts. And so what is happening in, in Texas, for example, 95% of the population growth in Texas was not white last decade. Texas creates no new opportunities for communities of color. Instead, it actually goes backwards. You know, there are naturally emerging, really competitive districts uh, where communities of color either broke through or were about to break through in the suburbs of Dallas and Houston, and they broke those up. They took out a large chunk of people of color and stuck them in another neighboring district, and then they backfilled those rural white voters to create a really safe um, white district. And and the result is, you know, before the redrawing the maps, there were 11 districts in Texas that Donald Trump won by 15 or more points. Now they're 21, and Republicans only have 24 seats in Texas. So 21 of the 24 seats are these super Trump, Trump plus 15 districts. And really, what you do is you end. You, you break up communities of color. The one district that uh, Republicans created for Democrats um, and the Texas map is a 
district in Austin that is 64% white. So white Democrats in Austin get a district, but people of color, you know, the growing Latino community, the black community, the Asian community get nothing. And instead, they actually go backwards because mm -hmm. people see that they're about to take power and they, they try to push, push, push back on that. Now, this is obviously something that happens every census, right? Every 10 years, you get into this political football back and forth of who's going to get to control the lines and who's going to try to set up their own majority in Congress. But what I found interesting about uh, the current redistricting uh, report that, that you guys published is that you say, quote, this appears to be one of the most abuse laden in U.S. history this time right now. And, and that's really important, I think, to put a fine point on where we are here in this moment isn't even um, customary and normal business as usual, despite the fact that this is always a competitive process. Can you say more about that? Yeah, I mean, there, there certainly are people around the country, and you, you see this line, and it's kind of pernicious about, oh, well, this redistricting cycle isn't turning out so bad for Democrats. It's okay, kind of, you know, Democrats gerrymandered in New York, and that offsets Texas. But still, you know, Texas is a state, and I'll go back to Texas just for example, like Democrats have 37% of the seats in Texas. Um, they don't w really win anymore unless they get somewhere around 58% of the vote, which is a super majority. In other words, Texas could be a really blue state, and Republicans would still have an almost two to one advantage in the congressional delegation. And that is, again, accomplished at the expense of communities of color. And I really do wish when people talk about whether this is a good cycle or a bad cycle that they, first of all, zoom in on states, zoom in on Texas, zoom in on Georgia, zoom in on North Carolina, and then they talk about communities of color because you cannot talk about whether a map is fair or not fair unless you ask, like, does this do right by communities of color who grew fast and provided almost all of the country's population growth in the last decade. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the way that this happens, just for everybody who's paying attention, when we say it matters that you vote, and not just in a presidential, but it actually matters that you vote every single opportunity that you get every single cycle, is that state legislatures all around the country are able to do this, despite the fact that people of color are the majority numerically, they're able to do it because in terms of political power, in those state legislatures, Republicans dominate across the board. In most states, Republicans have a majority where you're seeing all of this play out. So that's why it matters that we're also engaging on the state level, even though so much of our conversations happen at a national level. Who's in those seats down the road from you is really important when it comes down to this process. Michael, the Brennan Center's mid-cycle uh, assessment mentioned seven states where voting rights advocates are speaking up about the racial unfairness, if you will, of the new maps. You've been talking about some of them, Alabama, Arkansas, Georgia, Mississippi, North Carolina, South Carolina, Texas, etc. If these maps go forward, what happens next? What, what's the long-term impact uh, for these communities? Well, I think, you know, communities of color won't be at the table in a meaningful way. And that's, you know, in, in one of the, and again, the South is the fastest growing region in the country and can be people of color are fueling that and they won't be at the, at the table when decisions are being made either at the legislative level or at the congressional level. And, you know, North Carolina, for example, potentially a third of the, the seats of, of black members of the Senate are being eliminated. A fifth of the seats of the black members of the North Carolina House are being eliminated. Now, the court has struck that down and ordered those redrawn, but we'll see whether Republicans actually take that seriously or not. And and so, you know, but in other mm -hmm. states, it's going to be a much longer slog because, you know, the North Carolina courts acted I really want quickly. people to see. Other courts are going to take a long time. They're going to take a long time. So. I, w I want people to see what you're talking about with North Carolina, because this is really important. We have seen some crazy draw long, uh, lines that have been drawn by Republicans, but this one in North Carolina, take a look at this map. I mean, this is just wild. The, the, like you said, the state Supreme Court struck them down, but, you know, we what do you say when you see boundaries? For those are, who see this, look at the red. These are the, these are how the districts are drawn. So look at that around Charlotte. You've got all of that red is the same district. Clearly, people aren't even geographically connected all throughout that district. How does this even happen? Like when you see this kind of uh, drawing, I mean, it looks like something that a five year old would do. Uh, can, yeah. What is your thought about that, Michael, they, when they're sitting around making up these crazy um, these crazy maps? Yeah, I mean, you know, what, what they did in the first map that you showed, what they did is they went and added black voters to a district to pack black voters in as few districts as possible. So they drew these long tentacles out to 
find every black voter they could in that part of North Carolina to stick them in the district. And what that means is that black voters have less influence, right? They have influence the one district that they're all packed into, but they don't have influence in the other districts. And that, again, is like the dilution of black political power. Um, and really in response to like the, the very effective voting of black voters, right? You know, black voters are turning out, black voters are registered, black, black voters are paying attention to politics. But, you know, just because they're paying attention to politics, guess what they say? We're going to come back and we're going to punish you and we're going to take the power away by sticking you in a mm. district where you really don't have that power. That is what packing literally is. So when all else fails, we can take it to the court, right? Sure. And I know Brennan Center, you know, is working on this. How often, though, is litigation successful in preventing gerrymandering? And how hopeful are you, given the makeup of the current Supreme Court? Well, I think federal lit litigation may be a slog coming up. You know, the Supreme Court taking the Alabama case today, I think, is a dangerous signal that they, a lot of the justices intend to do damage to the Voting Rights Act. And, you know, the Supreme Court took the affirmative action cases earlier. And so I think there's a lot of debate among conservatives about what is the appropriate use of race in redistricting and society in general. And so I think, you know, next de next term, these cases will probably be argued in October or November. <laughs> Um, I think you're going to see a lot of damage to to use of race in, in redistricting. And so the remedy really may be in state courts. You know, a state court in North Carolina struck down the maps there. A state court in Ohio just today struck down the legislative maps for a second time. They, you know, they, they struck them down one time and the Republicans made a few tweaks and, and then repassed them. And the Supreme Court said, no, actually, that's not what we were talking about. <laughs> Go back and do it again. Um, so state courts seem to be a very effective remedy, but it's not clear that the remedy is going to be in federal courts anytime soon because of the makeup of the court, because this is a court that seems increasingly hostile to race and wants us to be mm -hmm. a race, a race neutral, race blind society believes that we've already reached that point. Yeah, which is just completely unrealistic. Michael Lee, Senior Counsel for the Brennan Center's Democracy Program. Thank you so much for joining me again here on Amplified. Appreciate the update from you.